Bringing you to HB 1705 FNA. Allowing the purchase and use of marijuana by adult. Regulating the purchase and use of marijuana. Imposing taxes on the wholesale and retail sale of marijuana. Good afternoon. Been a long time. My name is Bob Constantine. I just founded something, an organization called Marijuana Just Say No. That's K N O W. I'm representing the 21 and a half million people that uh, have been arrested since 1965 in cannabis related uh, crimes. I think it's interesting to note before I get into something, and I'll be brief, all of the detractors today are paid to be anti freedom. Um, they're using a lot of rhetoric from years ago, um, and they're saying how they feel, but they're very, very uh, slim on uh, actual stats and so forth. Um, speaking of prohibitionists, uh, in 1988, Judge Francis Young, he's a DEA judge, there was a petition to reschedule uh, cannabis. He stated that nearly all medicines have toxic, potentially lethal effects but marijuana is not such a substance. There is no record describing a proven documented cannabis-induced fatality. He also stated, I won't read the whole thing, he said, this again, this is a DEA judge, in strict medical terms, marijuana is far safer than many foods we commonly consume. For example, eating 10 raw potatoes can result in a toxic response. By comparison, it is physically impossible to eat enough marijuana to induce death. Marijuana in its natural form is one of the safest therapeutic, therapeutically active substances known to me. By any measure of rational analysis, marijuana can be safely used in a supervised <coughs> routine medical care. I'll submit that. Again, that's from a DEA judge in 1988. <coughs> Speaking to whether marijuana causes cancer, well, you shouldn't just believe me. You should go to the American Medical Association Journal, which published something just a couple weeks ago, January 10th, 2012, um, stating that it does not. You could also go to the Archives of Internal Medicine. The Yale School of Medicine posted something there in 2007 stating cannabis smoke exposure is not associated with airflow obstruction or emphysema. Or you could go to Donald Tashkin. He's a doctor from UCLA. He's the one that the prohibitionists used to like to trot out all of his reports. But here's what he came up with. He said what we found instead of cancer causing was no association at all and even a suggestion of some protective effect. You should also note that cannabis isn't always consumed by smoking it. It can be eaten, there's tinctures, and it can be vaporized. Concerning the gateway effect, I won't belabor that, but there are studies recently done here in New Hampshire. University of New Hampshire did a study <coughs> saying there's no gateway effect. The University of Pittsburgh, these are government schools. Uh, also, somebody mentioned earlier about uh, how dangerous marijuana is compared to other substances. Well, tobacco is the most dangerous substance, according to U.S. Surgeon General reports. Alcohol, which you might note, the state of New Hampshire sells $534 million worth of alcohol last year. That's the second leading cause of death. Um, you go all the way down through caffeine, 10,000 people or so die annually from caffeine, and cannabis is zero. So I'm here to refute all of uh, what you heard and what you may hear after me. It's baloney. Uh, as far as um, the, whether it's a legitimate question, apparently the American public feels that it is, because for four years running, it's been the number one question. When Obama came out and said, I want to be open and ask me some questions, uh, the internet questions that he got, uh, the number one question was, what are you going to do to legalize cannabis? And he's denied it so far. About 97 and a half people per hour in the United States get arrested for cannabis-related crimes. That's a lot of people. That's why we have the most people in this country in jail of any other country in the world. Most of these people have never heard anyone. I know. I'm one of them. Um, I will echo, uh, I believe uh, Mr. Van Wickler said something about, um, well, somebody mentioned something about uh, Article 7. I think it was actually uh, Tim Comerford. Article 7 um, in New Hampshire is the one that deals with state sovereignty. 
You should also check out Article 2 in the New Hampshire Constitution. That's natural rights. That basically says, in a lot of words, you own yourself. Nobody else owns you. If you don't hurt anyone, you own yourself. Somebody mentioned, I think it was Article 10, the United States Constitution. Check that one out, but also check out Article 9. The federal government doesn't really even have the granted power to prevent anyone from ingesting anything. They grant it. And it's because, essentially, states have wimped out that they've just kept it going. I find it very ironic. We're talking about alcohol and children. Go up to Bristol, New Hampshire. There's a little strip mall. State liquor store here. Daycare facility here. I'm fine. Um, I'm willing to bet also that none of you in this room have ever seen the published controlled New Hampshire drug schedule. Mm -hmm. The New Hampshire controlled drug schedule, the way it's supposed to be published. It's supposed to be published in a newspaper. I'm willing to bet none of you have ever seen it because it doesn't exist. It was supposed to happen. The Commissioner of Health and Human Services of this state is supposed to do that. If you look at statutory construction, your RSA 2132, you might want to write that down. You can hear more about this. Um, I filed the 91A request. Um, I was kind of busy preparing for my own defense. Um, but I took the time to file that. He never showed what we heard at Merrimack County Superior Court. In the judge's decision, he verified that no local schedules exist. Well, what's the significance of that? How are people supposed to know what's legal and illegal if the commissioner of Health and Human Services doesn't even follow the law that he's supposed to follow to publish what's on this list? We'll get into that a little more, but um, trust me. As far as the substance goes, there's no question in my mind that cannabis, I'm not advocating people use it, but it's fairly benign. Far less dangerous than many things out there that are legal. But there's another question I'd like to raise. I'd ask every one of you, who owns your body? If the state can sell $534 million worth of something that's technically poison, and then prohibit you from ingesting something that's been declared medicine, not just by the 16 states that have medical marijuana, not just by Washington, D.C., by the federal government itself. I'm going to submit to you in my testimony the United States patent for cannabis. It says, it's patent number 6,630,000 something, something, something. Cannabinoids is antioxidants and neuroprotectants. I'll put that in. So they patented it. I don't know if there's any prohibitionists left here, but I would like to extend an invitation to any of them um, to have an open <coughs> and rational debate. Um, I'd be willing to participate any time, any place, um, because I know this is limited, and I know you've heard a lot of testimony, so I'm open to questions at this point. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. Seeing none, thank you. Mm -hmm. Have you ever written testimony?